uncertain times at the moment and uh, we're all struggling just trying to figure out how to do things a little bit differently. Just a quick note to say apologies for the background noise. That's this so, one's fault. We've decided that I'm going to read you uh, through those daily readings that we've been uh, trying out in our fellowship groups. The ones that are taking us through hopefully the entirety of the New Testament this year. We're midway through Matthew, so I'm actually going to start uh, midway through, as odd as that might seem. I'm going to read to you from scripture, a chapter a day, and then I'm going to offer just a few thoughts, whatever occurred to me at the time. So full disclosure, it might not be excellent. Uh, and then after all that, we're going to end with a short prayer. It's my hope that this will just give you something to focus on, a little bit of time to think about uh, the Bible and what it means to us in this time, but also to stay connected. So as I post this on um, whatever social media uh, platform uh, it comes to you in, can you respond? That would be great. Let's have a chat. Let's interact with one another. Because even though we might be behind uh, screens or at keyboards or on phones, we're still a family of God together. I hope you enjoy it. So, Matthew 13, reading this time from the New International Version of the Bible. And I've managed to pick the first day where it's a lovely long chapter. So, here's reading. Matthew 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood upon the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, all the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. But the seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth that many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message of the kingdom and does under, not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. 
This is the seed sown along the path. The one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is the one who hears the word, but at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the person who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke them. They make everything unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the person who understands the word. They hear it and they understand it. They produce a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? When then did all the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. <clears throat> the servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man has planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, when it grows, it is the largest of a garden plants and it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked through all the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be in the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found the one of great value, he went away and sold everything that he had and bought it. Once again, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven. And they are like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue. And they were amazed. Where did this man get the wisdom and such miraculous powers? They asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And his father Joseph? Aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where did this man get all these things? And they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honour. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Wow, that was a really long reading. So I'll keep my uh, thoughts on this brief. And remember, these are just uh, thoughts that occurred to me uh, as I was reading aloud to you. So don't, you know, take me to some sort of theological um, treaties and get me told off for heresy because it's just it's just what's occurred to me. One being that sometimes like the natural way that we deal with texts like this and um, and the different categories or perhaps it's just me but we instantly sort of try and think of how those categories apply to us so oh oh do we know you know rocky seeds do we know ones that were scorched up and I think um, that's a natural thing to sort of think about but actually it's like it's very dangerous that none of these um, sort of parables are meant for us to then go and make a discernment about anybody else's journey or life. It's not for us to then think, oh, hang on, have I produced, you know, 60 fold my um, my own like my own harvest? Is that is that 60 fold? Is it 100 fold? It's not about making those sort of judgments or calls. Um, indeed, that's kind of exactly what the next parable or a parable a couple on it's talking about when it's like the weeds um grow with the wheat is that actually you don't know we don't know anything we can't actually discern um what's good fruit sometimes and what's bad fruit it's really really difficult and god's the one that's in charge of all that and you leave it to god and you don't make those judgments um the parables are more speaking about um, the, the importance of good roots, the importance of, of having faith that's um, enriched by uh, lots of different things and isn't just surface level. Uh, but that's not for us to then make a call on, on somebody else. It's for us alone. Uh, the other thought that I had was you've all got so much uh, time, potentially. No, I doubt it, though. Uh, to, but to think about things, could you come up uh, with what you think a kingdom parable would be today what would be what would be your example of how the kingdom of of god is what is it like in modern context you know uh i would love to hear anybody's ideas uh for what that is um so like i said comment make a suggestion tell me what you thought uh try and be as nice as you can you know that i'm um so um insecure i need lots of praise no but please interact with us it would be great to hear from you and now a prayer 
loving Lord, in these difficult times, we turn to you. When all about us is changing in ways that we never even imagined, Lord God, we seek you. We seek you in scripture. We seek you in our prayers. We still sing uh, songs of worship to you, Lord God, because we need your presence and the knowledge of you in our lives at this time. Pray that as we find new ways of doing discipleship right now, you will bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.